Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Knights of the Alternate Histories. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Jingaoism, which is basically North Koreanism, though it's kind of weird. So, let's get into it. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below, because the interactions really help the channel out. I really appreciate all of you guys. I'm just trying to get these out before school starts, so I hope you guys do enjoy. Have a good one, and let's get into it. So, what is Jingaoism? Well, it's very militaristic nationalism. Basically, the countries threaten to invade or nuke or do whatever if they practice Jingaoism. Basically, they're scared that they'll get conquered, so they're threatening to conquer everyone else and shed human life for nothing. This really hurts the ideology itself, as the people and the whole world just suffers. It comes from an off-brand form of monarchism, neocrasism, that's weird to say, and we'll be going over that soon enough. But basically, they believe that they're the best and they were chosen, so they take power. They may claim to be a monarchy, but really they're a huge dictatorship, even though they're basically kind of the same thing. So let's get into the things of the ideologies. Well, first they start a huge personality cult, making their citizens believe that they're the best country and all of the countries love them, even though this is pretty much not true. Once again, the to the North Korea watching this, please do not put me on a list. Anyways, with this happening now, they start to prepare to fight each other, which overall all really hurts the world. Instead of having direct lines where you die and you pass on the leadership, the leadership means it for life. So whatever role you become once your monarch dies or the person selects you, then they stay in that role and they're still technically above you. You're just now interpret stuff for them and you get your own special role that you keep when you die and you just keep on explaining it down the line. So how does this affect the people? Well, basically, the dictatorship gets more money and it goes up, and the people get less money and they go down, quickly going into poverty and starting to starve themselves. This really hurts everyone, and with all of the propaganda, they believe that all of the countries have it worst off, so they don't really complain because they think they're in the first world and they're getting the best treatment. And what happens if they don't? Well, they're forced to by the military. They're forced to claim that they love the state. They're forced to claim a bunch of different stuff. And with that happening, people don't know if they're actually getting threatened or they're actually patriotic. So they then spread on the rumors, which sometimes can destroy the world and hurt everything a lot, basically destroying the uh, world. As well as this, the emphasis is on the children. As children know and get to grow up, by putting them and indoctrinating them in this ideology, then they believe that they're the best and nothing can destroy them. With this going on, basically they raise a new generation who believes that they're the best at everything and don't really complain about anything. I'm pretty sure this won't go without saying, but there is huge amounts of conscription and a huge military. By doing this, people can get out of poverty, and they have a bigger military to threaten the state. Well, not the state itself, but the people in the state and other states outside of it to try and colonize. They also try to get bigger weapons, and I know I used colonize there, that was intentional. There is nationalist Jingaoism, which, if you think Jingaoism is nationalist already, then this is even bigger. Basically, they believe that all countries are them, and they should be wiped out if there's nothing else, and that they're the best, which really, really is scary, and just this huge personality cult trying to wipe out everyone. 
And then there's peaceful Jingaoism, which basically they threaten everyone, but they would never actually do anything. And basically their military is smaller, but they just believe in the same beliefs, except for the military belief, which is kind of weird. So that's kind of the opposite of it, but also is it itself. Has this ever been done in real life? Well, yes, in North Korea, with Kim Jong-un currently serving, and now also with Kim Il-sung becoming a president for life. This is very Jingaoism, and basically Jingaoism is what North Korea practices, which is kind of scary, because Jingaoism actually kind of scares me, to be honest. 5 out of 10. It's a good way to control your people, and it's pretty scary, which kind of uh, increases its score a little. And it's kind of a cool one itself, because with it being cool like this, it definitely earns its score. Because at least it's not centrism, and being in real life and has been working for about 50 years, then yeah, it's a pretty... Whoa, that video was less fun to make. Um, this recording session, I have one left to go, so I'm really hoping to get there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you really made it to this far at the end, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down. Actually, no, don't make sure. Do it. I demand it. Otherwise, I will create a personality cult around myself and destroy you. So do it. Wow, that actually was a terrible video. You shouldn't watch any more, especially not the, the one on the left where I it's my most recent upload, and the one on the right where YouTube recommends. Definitely do not watch that. Just go outside, okay, boomers?